Welcome back to video three. So now that we're able to have a place to store our users in our database, let's begin the process of creating new users. So the first thing we'll do is we'll inject the user manager that identity gives us into our identity controller. And then we'll set up our register method. We already have the API created. We just need to set up the part where we create a new user. And then we'll make sure that the user is using a unique email and we'll set up some settings within our startup class for that. So let's first inject the user manager into our controller. So inside of the API project controllers and we wanna open up the identity controller. So the first thing we'll do here is we'll bring in the user manager inside of our constructor. So we'll pull that in and we'll bring in the user manager from ASP.NET Core Identity. And we'll go ahead and set up our user manager, our private property. So if you missed video one, we already set up identity inside of our startup class. And I'll go ahead and sh I'll show you that. And we set this up in video one. If you missed video one for any reason, you'll see a pop out on, up here in the top right corner. If you click on that, you'll be able to see the entire playlist if you wanna go back and watch video one. And I'll close this back down. So now we set up our constructor. Now we're ready to set up our register API. So we're passing in this model. If we check this model, I'll, I'll right click on it, go to definition. All you need to do to create a new user is pass in the username, email, and password. So that's what you need for that. And then inside here is where we'll create our new user. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a new instance of the identity user. And I'm gonna call this user to create. And we're creating a new instance of the identity user and the information that's being passed in from the model, we're setting the email and username. Next, we're ready to create the user and we'll set that to a result. So we're using the user manager and we're using the create async method that the user manager gives us. We're passing in the user to create our new instance of the user. And then also the model password as the second parameter. And then also let's take care of this await. So we need to make this a async method now. And then also don't forget to add in the task. And I'll make sure I close it up correctly. And that should take care of all of our errors. Now this result will return a true or false if we succeeded or not. So if we succeeded, we want to return back 200. So if we succeeded, we'll return OK with the result. Now if we failed, on the other hand, we'll return a bad request. Also, we'll return the errors as well the entire result. And that's what you want your register method to look like for now. Now we're gonna be coming back and revisiting this throughout the videos, but this is a good start for creating a user. Now, before we actually start creating new users, we wanna go inside of the startup class. So I'll go ahead and open this up. And what we wanna do is set some configurations within this file. So when we're in development and we're creating new users, we're logging in, I don't like to enter in big passwords so let's set some settings for that and also we want to make sure that we make this email unique and we can set that within the configurations as well so if we go inside of here and we could add configurations for our passwords and also we can make sure that the each email that's being passed in is unique and we're setting that right here so i'm going to set the password length to four. Now you definitely want to change this back to something higher when you're in production, but for testing and when we're testing in, like when we're trying to log in, we could just enter in short passwords. Also, I'm going to set like uppercase, lowercase. I'll set all this to false. So, so all those are now no longer required. And then I'll move this back up to the top here. So it's a little cleaner. And now that we added a bunch of options, now we're ready to test our register API and see if we can create new users. So I'll make sure I save this. So the API is located at localhost 5000 identity register. And also this is gonna be a post. Also, we're gonna be passing in some information into the body, raw, and JSON. And the three required fields is gonna be the email, username, and password. So this is a unique email and you want to make sure it's unique and also a unique username. So let's go ahead and hit send and see if everything is working. 
Okay, so we succeeded at creating a new user. Now, if we hit send again, we should get back a bad request. So let's try that. So we got back a bad request and it's complaining that we have a duplicate user and a duplicate email. Now, you would never get this message if you did not set that within your options on the startup class like we did. So you definitely want to make sure you do that. So let's go ahead and enter in two. So we should get an error for duplicate username now. Okay, and that's good. And then if we change this back and add on two to, to the username, hit send again, and we're getting an error for that for the email. So that's great. So everything is working good. Now, before we move on to video four, let's double check the database and make sure our user is in the database. We can go ahead and close this down and I'll close down all of our windows and open up the database. So I hit control shift P and open database and the app DB. That should open it up over here. And then if you go into the ASP.NET users, right click on that and show table. And we sh you should have a new user within your database. So I created a user called Mike and we have an email at test at test.com. Um, by the way, if you would like to see the entire row, you could just scroll it like this. So we successfully created a user. Now we're ready to move on to video four. So what we'll do in video four is we'll set up our auth service. We'll set up our register method in there and also within the component make our call to our API and see if we could create a user from the front end. We'll do that next.